Welcome to World at Work TV. I'm Allison Avalos and I'm back with Carrie Shu, and we're finishing our three-part series on salary surveys. And today we're talking about how to utilize the data you're finding in those surveys. Carrie, will you first talk about what aging survey data is and how it's achieved? Aging data is probably one of the most fundamental things that we, we need to do. And, and the, the principal issue is this. Um, obviously, as comp professionals, we are trying to uh, determine competitive pay levels at a certain point in time. Okay, So in a perfect world, uh, we'd be able to open our survey and the data would be current as of, of today. Now, as we all know from participating in salary surveys, when we uh, submit data to a, uh, a salary survey, uh, to make sure that we're all on the same page, the, the survey house is asking us to submit a, uh, our data set effective as of a, a point in time. Let's just say that's March 1st, for example. So everyone submits their data uh, effective March 1st. Uh, the survey house gets all the data and they, and they manipulate it and, and review it and scrub it and all that stuff. And several months later, they, they publish their report. Okay, let's, uh, let's say that's June 1st, okay? So you get the data as of June 1st, and that's one survey source you have along with all the others that you get, which have all done essentially the same thing. Um, and what you have is when you're opening your survey data, you automatically have a data, uh, data set that's three or four months old or however months however many months it's uh, been since the survey was collected. Um, and that is a problem, and uh, it's, it's just the nature of the beast. So what we do as compensation professionals is a simple technique called aging the data, where we determine, uh, based on other surveys, World at Work being one good survey source with the salary budget survey, as to how fast is the market moving in general. Is that 2%? Is that 3%? And then when we have a survey uh, statistic that is dated as of a certain age and we want to age it or forward it to whatever today's date is, we just take that aging factor um, and apply it and that allows us to make uh, the past data now current. Now is it absolutely accurate? Is it, is it uh, infallible? Well, absolutely not. But it's a reasonable way for us to make sure that between the time when uh, survey houses are collecting data that we can use the data um, effectively uh, within those periods. In our last uh, part of this series, you talked a little bit about using multiple survey sources, and I imagine the same could be applied if you have multiple jobs that you need to blend to accurately reflect a job that you're trying to price. Talk about the process for combining data from different surveys or from different jobs? Yeah, so we talked uh, previously about the, uh, the advantage of having multiple data points uh, as it lends credibility, validity, uh, to uh, making sure that we, the rate of pay that we think a job is being paid is actually uh, what it is. And so we might collect uh, several surveys and they may actually all have the same job within it. Well, we can use that to our advantage. The question then becomes, uh, how do we combine that information all within to get a, a single statistic? And weighting is probably one of the most common ways that we do that. Let's say we have three surveys um, for a position, a manager of accounting, for example. We have three different statistics from each of those survey sources. If we have good confidence that all three of those surveys are, are reputable and that they should carry the same weight, we can simply put a 33% weight on each of those statistics and weight them together to um, arrive at a single statistic. Now, for example, maybe one of our surveys is an industry-specific one and we, we think that one has more credence. It, it should carry a little bit more weight. Well, we could weight that survey uh, that survey statistic with 50% of the weight and then put, say, 25% on the other two surveys. Again, this is just a simple way for us to take multiple survey data on similar or the same positions 
and be able to arrive at a single statistic. And then how about for a job where maybe there isn't a, a perfect job in the survey that represents what that job does? So maybe you have a combination of a couple jobs that together are equivalent to what your job does. How do you approach that? Every organization is going to have some jobs to which there's really no good survey uh, match. There are a couple of techniques that we can use in those cases. Let's just take an example. Let's say we have um, uh, an HR manager job at your company that also has responsibility for facilities. Okay, now those are sort of disparate functions. Um, I've actually seen that in a few organizations I work for where those two functions together, but oftentimes they're completely separate and maybe are, are in different departments. Well, uh, if we go to our survey, we may have data on the HR manager position and we may have data on the facilities manager position, but we have no, we have no data on the HR facilities manager because it's a one-off for our organization. Well, we can do uh, one of two things. We could either do a blending kind of approach where we look at the job and we say how much of this job is HR manager work, how, how much of it is facilities manager work, and uh, we can use the same technique of weighting, say uh, if those are the same for example, we would provide, uh, offer 50% weighting on the HR manager match and 50% weighting on the facilities match and bl uh, blend that job together. Now maybe again, it's only 25% facilities and 75% and then we would just adjust the weights uh, accordingly. The other approach we can use is called a premium. Now let's take our example uh, one step further and say we have no data on the facilities manager position. So we have this job that does both functions but we, have, we don't have any data on the facilities manager position. Well, we can add a premium to the job. We can kind of look at it, and, and I understand this is fully arbitrary. We're going to just have to take a guess. You know, how much extra is this job worth to us because this job is, this person has taken on additional facilities manager's work? Maybe that's 10% extra, 20% extra. Again, completely arbitrary, um, but we would simply take the HR manager market rate and add 10 or 15% and we call this a, a premium approach and it's particularly effective if you simply don't have uh, market data for, for half of the job that you're, you're trying to fill. Thanks, Carrie, for the overview on salary surveys as well as some of those best practices when using them. For World at Work TV, I'm Allison Avalos.